So just to say how delighted I am to be here, um, we're in for a, a really very special uh, day, I think. Um, fantastic programme put together by Ashley, Hilary and colleagues here. So when I got the email from Hilary asking me to chair the event today, it really chimed with a lot of the activity that I'm doing at the moment uh, at the University of Leeds, uh, involved in public art commissioning. Um, also, the fact that I am a trustee of the Methodist Art Collection. Uh, I also have an interest in Duncan Grant, and I've had an interest in him for, for many years, but I'm now, of course, uh, attached and working with the Stanley and Audrey Burton Gallery uh, at the University of Leeds, where the Bro Bloomsbury um, Circle are so incredibly important to our collections. So, um, my interest in Duncan Grant comes from perhaps a slightly different angle in that some of you may know that Duncan Grant was a great tennis player and I organised uh, an exhibition at the University of Birmingham when I was director of the Barber mm -hmm. Institute of Fine Arts and um, one of the wonderful, uh, he's a great player himself and did some great tennis pictures um, in the first part of the 20th century but one of his great drawings that we had to that exhibition was an image of Paul Roche uh, nude with a tennis racket and it is in fact dated at exactly the same time uh, as um, Grant was working on this chapel. So I first saw this chapel in uh, the 1990s and then I came a couple of years ago and uh, was giving a lecture at Spalding, drove past uh, Lincoln and thought I must go and see it again. And I remember that really luminous colour as you come into the chapel, beautiful, beautiful sunny day and was really inspired by it and I wrote a postcard to the chairman of the Methodist Art Collection and said we must have the Methodist Art Collection in Lincoln and I got an email reply a couple of days later saying it's actually coming to Lincoln. So it's wonderful that this has all come together and particularly that Lothar has selected three key works from the Methodist Art Collection to be part of uh, this exhibition that we're uh, celebrating today. I am uh, also very interested in uh, the 1950s and the whole question of public art in um, sacred places and uh, in wider urban um, environments. I think that um, my experience of being in Lincoln is that twice I got a parking ticket here and yesterday I was panicking like mad trying to park my car and I came in to see the exhibition before chairing a focus group up at the cathedral and I came into the exhibition and I came into Lothar's very wonderful private space in this public gallery there were school children milling around and I felt calm and relaxed after a few moments uh, meditation in there so I think it's a really very special um, response to the Grant uh, Chapel and we're going to hear so much more about that as the day goes on and the very interesting commissioning behind it. This uh, coincides as well with my work on Mitzi Cunliffe, who was actually uh, working on a sculpture for the University of Leeds between 1954 and 1956, so entirely at the same time as Grant was working on this um, chapel. Her work has also now been very much overlooked. She's predominantly known simply for her design of the famous BAFTA theatrical mask. And in both cases, there's this tremendous amount of information about the commission, which is absolutely fascinating and which you've been able to explore to some extent in this exhibition with Grant. And we'll be opening an exhibition on Mitzi Cunliffe uh, on the 30th of March. And with the Out There exhibition as well at Somerset House, there is this real interest now in public commissioning in the uh, 1950s. So I think this conference is very timely indeed. And uh, we heard only yesterday about the um, giant coat hanger crucifixes which have gone on display in, um, by David Mack in uh, Chester Cathedral. Uh, there's so much that we are able to explore at the moment in this um, symposium and I very much look forward to uh, chairing uh, the day. I'm going to be quite strict on time and just to say that after the presentations this morning there will be just five minutes for questions at the end of those presentations and then we will have the chance, as we know we have to be quite strict about ourselves, getting ourselves up to the cathedral. There'll be plenty of time for more questions uh, this afternoon at the uh, breakout sessions and in the plenary group as well. So yeah, I just always uh, get to have a very brief introduction to how this project came about and kind of how we work basically. So we see this is the Osh Gallery and the collection. Uh, the Osh Gallery came about because of James Ward Usher, who was a jeweler in the town. 
and uh, he came from a family of jewelers and clock makers and he took out a kind of early form of pattern or image right on this image of the imp which is found in Lincoln Cathedral. It's a gargoyle in Lincoln Cathedral which subsequently became the icon of the town and is now the, the football town is called the imps and the county council images the imps. Um, from selling these imp jewellery he basically made his fortune and was an avid collector. So he collected decorative arts and silver and all kinds of really interesting things. He was quite an uh, interesting collector, so he did watercolours of every object he owned. And then when he passed away, he bequeathed his entire collection to the city of Lincoln and the people of Lincolnshire, and also the money for the Usher Gallery. So it was always a purpose-built gallery. But we always have this kind of in the back of our minds when we're working. Um, we're not called curators here, we're called collections access officers. So even with our titling, it's always about how we allow access to the collections that we have and that they were philanthropically given to the city and we should use contemporary art and use whatever is in our kind of canons to encourage people to uh, look at our history and our heritage and our collections. So 10 years ago the collection was built and this is a piece by Edward Allington which is an engagement ring between the two buildings and when this museum was built it took over from the county museum showing archaeology from prehistory to medieval times. Um, we renamed the entire site kind of Art and Archaeology in Lincolnshire. So there's now a temporary exhibition space in this building. Um, I've kind of taken that approach to heart, the art and archaeology, and I've always approached everything as kind of one cultural heritage. I don't really make a, a difference between them. So we've done a lot of ahistoric shows and we've worked with a lot of artists who work with our collections to produce new work. So this is a piece by Justify Panic, where she used one of our marble sculptures. Um, this is a piece by Dan Coopy, which was a commission. Um, it ha houses a Roman coin from our collection, and he digitally scanned it and made these new pieces called Oins, which also now enter our collection. And we've uh, bought the copyright for them so we can reshare them as well. And as you can see in the rehang, if you have time to go to the Usher, we always mix contemporary with historic works. So it's always about kind of making everything a historic and accessible. Um, as part of this, we did a big project called Lincoln 3D Scans, where we 3D scanned our entire sculpture collection with artist Oliver Larrick and gave it away copyright free. And that allowed us to completely question the notion of access and how we allow audiences to access and use parts of our collection. So off the back of this, you'll see flags currently <coughs> flying on the usher, which are by Gerard Williams. And this, because of these changes to our policy and how we collect work, this allowed us to commission these flags, but we own the digital rights to them. So. Obviously, we're not going to care for flags as the museum would because they disintegrate. They're kind of ratty at the moment. They need to come down next week. Um, but we own the right and the images to reprint them and to share them with other organisations. So I had all of this in my head when I kind of moved here and I discovered the Duncan Grant mural and how we could use this way of working to make it kind of apparent. So after going up to the mural, um, obviously, I was really taken just visually by the mural, but I was always thinking about how we could use this to do a show. I've been thinking about it for quite a few years. and then. Um, we actually invited a different artist to do the show. He turned around to us and was like, I don't think it's appropriate, but my friend loves the mural and you should look at his work, which is how we discovered Lotar, which was really kind of giving and lovely. So uh, we approached Lotar and the basis of the exhibition in my head was always not to respond to the Dong and Grant murals in a kind of binary way, but it was more that if I was that curator now and I had a spare chapel, who would I choose to make a mural for Lincoln Cathedral? who do I think is in the same position in that career or is working in the most interesting way who I would have commissioned, which is how we came across Lothar. And at some point in that conversation, I think I've convinced myself that Lothar brought it up <laughs> about building a chapel, possibly because it was uh, quite challenging. We decided to rebuild the chapel. So that's how we got to where we are with the commission. So I'll hand over to Linda now, who was a tour guide at the cathedral and has written books on Duncan Grant and the chapels and knows so much more about that than I do. So she'll give us a short presentation. 